we get to know that SpaceX is developing a rocket with the capability of fully and rapidly reusable like an airplane, that is Starship. However, fully reusing rockets is a huge challenge for any rocket manufacturer. Indeed, various theoretical designs of fully reusable launch vehicles have been tested during the history of spaceflight, but they generally prove too expensive or impractical to implement. It's a reason why SpaceX's reusable launch system development program was born with the sample test being Falcon's line rocket. Of course, during its development, a series of changes happened, and the Falcon 9 booster reuse records we see today are clear evidence of the company's initial success on its journey. So, what is SpaceX's secret? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. To be honest, the company has begun its journey to revolutionize rocket reusability from the crudest landing method, the parachute. SpaceX tried parachutes on Falcon 1 and found the first stages were suffering damage even before the parachutes could be deployed. In addition, they found that there were many issues here. Parachutes are hard to steer to a precise landing point. Parachutes don't slow enough to avoid damage on landing or splash down. The Falcon 9 booster is too heavy, about 20 ton is empty to land in a net or catch with a helicopter and salt water would damage the engines. Parachutes might not scale up well for Starship's super heavy booster, over 100 ton is empty if you need a slow impact speed. Parachutes wouldn't slow you as much on Mars and would be useless on the moon. Parachutes are a pain to recover, clean, check, and repack for reuse. Last but not least, SpaceX wants to recover and relaunch a super heavy first stage in under 24 hours. That wouldn't be practical using parachutes. So, the company subsequently switched to developing a powered descent landing system. A description of the reusable launch system was outlined in September 2011. SpaceX said it would attempt to develop powered descent and recovery of both Falcon 9 stages, a fully vertical takeoff, vertical landing rocket. In September 2012, SpaceX began flight tests on a prototype reusable first stage with the suborbital Grasshopper rocket. Grasshopper consisted of a Falcon 9V 1.0 first stage tank, a single Merlin 1D engine with a height of 32 meters. The landing gear was fixed. The first test flight of Grasshopper made a quick 1.8 meter jump up and down at SpaceX's test facility in McGregor, Texas. With each subsequent flight, the company then tried to shoot a bit higher or do something different. As Elon Musk stated a grasshopper could land on Earth with the accuracy of a helicopter, those tests continued into 2014, including testing of a second and larger prototype vehicle, F9R Dev-1. F9R Dev-1 was constructed out of the used first stage tank of the Falcon 9V 1.1, so it was nearly 50% longer than the first grasshopper. The landing legs were retractable by design. The legs had less weight than on the first Grasshopper. The F9R Dev-1 had a different engine bay than the first Grasshopper vehicle. The F9R Dev-1 vehicle in Texas was intended to take off and accelerate with three engines as the test flight never needs the full thrust to take off a fully loaded Falcon 9 with an orbital payload while completing the descent and landing with only one engine. A third flight test vehicle F9R Dev-2 was initially planned to be flown only at the high altitude test range at Spaceport America and at altitudes of up to 91,000 meters. In September 2014, following the destruction of the F9R Dev-1, SpaceX changed the plans so the F9R Dev-2 vehicle would fly first in McGregor for low altitude testing. The initial FAA permit to fly the Falcon 9 reusable development vehicle at McGregor in Texas was open until February 2015. On 19 February 2015, SpaceX announced that the F9R Dev-2 would be discontinued. During April 2015, SpaceX performed tanking tests on the in-flight abort rocket on the Vandenberg Air Force Base SLC-4E. Since this rocket only had three Merlin 1D engines and the New Mexico site was to have been used for testing the returned first stages, it was speculated that the discontinued F9R Dev-2 was repurposed as the launch vehicle in the in-flight abort test. In addition to the groundbreaking vertical takeoff vertical landing recovery method, SpaceX really needs somewhere for the booster to land with both ground pads and autonomous spaceport drone ships. An autonomous spaceport drone ship ASDS is an ocean-going vessel derived from a deck barge outfitted with station-keeping engines and a large landing platform. 
SpaceX has three operational drone ships, just read the instructions to JRTI and a shortfall of Gravitas, ASOG operating in the Atlantic for launches from Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, and of course I still love you, operating in the Pacific for supporting missions from Vandenberg Space Force Base. JRTI operated in the Pacific Ocean for Vandenberg Air Force Base launches from 2016 to 2019, before leaving the Port of Los Angeles in August 2019. The ASDS ships are a key component of the SpaceX Reusable Launch System Development Program, which aims to significantly lower the price of space launch services through full and rapid reusability. Any flights going to geostationary orbit or exceeding escape velocity will require landing at sea, encompassing about half of SpaceX missions. In October 2014, SpaceX publicly announced that they had contracted with the Louisiana shipyard to build a floating landing platform for reusable orbital launch vehicles. As of December 2014, the first drone ship used, the McDonough Marine Service's Marmac 300 barge, was based in Jacksonville, Florida, at the northern tip of the Jacksport Cruise Terminal where SpaceX built a stand to secure the Falcon stage during post-landing operations. The ASDS landing location for the first landing test was in the Atlantic approximately 320 kilometers northeast of the launch location at Cape Canaveral and 266 kilometers southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. On 23 January 2015, during repairs to the ship following the unsuccessful first test, Musk announced that the ship was to be named Just Read the Instructions, with a sister ship planned for West Coast launches to be named, of course, I Still Love You. On 29 January, SpaceX released a manipulated photo of the ship with the name illustrating how it would look once painted. The first Just Read the Instructions was retired in May 2015 after approximately six months of service in the Atlantic, and its duties were assumed by Of Course I Still Love You. In 2018, SpaceX began construction of a third barge, a shortfall of gravitas. SpaceX lands its rockets on a barge in some cases, such as when it allows for recovery of rocket first stages at sea for high-velocity missions that do not carry enough fuel to return to the launch site after lofting spacecraft onto an orbital trajectory. There are several reasons why it chooses to land on a barge rather than landing at the launch pad like other rockets. Reusability. SpaceX aims to make its rockets reusable, which can significantly reduce the cost of spaceflight by landing the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket on a barge, SpaceX is able to recover and refurbish it for reuse on future missions. Safety. Landing a rocket on a barge provides additional safety compared to landing at the launch pad. By landing at sea, SpaceX can avoid potential hazards on the ground and reduce the risk of damage to surrounding structures. Flexibility. Landing on a barge also provides more flexibility in terms of where the rocket can be launched from. By landing at sea, SpaceX can launch from a wider range of locations, including those that may not have the infrastructure to support rocket landings. Accuracy. The use of a barge can provide a greater degree of control over the landing location, as the barge can be moved to the optimal location for landing based on factors such as wind conditions and trajectory. Overall, landing on a barge allows SpaceX to achieve its goals of reusability, safety, flexibility, and accuracy, and has become a key component of its rocket recovery and reuse efforts. On the other hand, returning to the launch site helps SpaceX not to take more time to bring the rocket back from the ocean. Of course, they tend to use it in cases where the Falcon 9 has enough power to return, usually for small payload missions. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time. You next.